Welcome to Terror in Tandem, a podcast about finding entertainment in the macabre. Hosted by the knowledgeable and lovable Thora and Richard Mathiason. Each episode, we discuss the horror genre, from books to film to TV and beyond. Sometimes, even from the beyond. You can find us online at terrorintandem.com and on Instagram at terrorintandem. Hola. Together. Forever. Oh. We're the dream warriors. Oh, that was by request. Don't want to dream no more. Yes. I highly recommend anyone who, I mean, obviously everyone listened to our now classic bronzed enshrined in, in the Voyager capsule episode um, on sequels. Uh, I highly recommend everyone YouTube the video music video by Dokken for oh, yeah. Dream Warriors because it's amazing. They intercut footage from Nightmare on Elm Street 3 with Patricia Arquette, but instead of like putting up pictures and and newspaper clippings of, you know, Freddy and and the Thompsons, she's doing putting up like tons of pictures of Dokken nice. all over her bedroom. That's awesome. And they menace her down a hallway by walking towards her playing guitar in like an aggressive way <laughs> <laughs> it's like amazing and the hair and the hair is just feathered yeah, oh, yeah. it's great <laughs> but yeah do yourself a jolly and uh watch that it is just amazing i but- miss those days remember when um terminator 2 came out and Guns N' Roses did You Could Be Mine and of course. Schwarzenegger yeah. and Eddie Furlong were in it and yeah. it was like a whole storyline. That is so cool. I know. Like I, I want those days to come back. I think that still happens to an extent. I mean, uh, I think it's just not. Maybe... David Fincher got his start doing yeah. music videos. Lots of um, people did. Spike Jones. Yeah. And lots of people go back to film some videos or yeah. specials yeah. or like, you know. Some uh, a lot of comedy specials. Even Martin Scorsese has done. A lot of comedy specials have been, yeah, done lately by famous like photographers or directors. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, but we're not here to talk about any of that. We're here to give you some July recommendations. Happy July, everybody! Because wherever you are, it's probably humid. Unless you're in the southern hemisphere, in which case, bundle up. Right. Yeah. So I mean. It's July. I love July, although it is the where we are in the northern hemisphere, a sweltering, sweaty, swampy month. And like, you know, but I'm a swamp monster, so it fits. It's, it feels like home. The bog I was spawned in. Yeah, absolutely. Um, also, my birthday's in July. It is. Yay. Happy, happy pre-birthday. Oh, you know, pre-birthday can still get. Never mind. Um, so. While we're talking about July, why don't we get into some pretty cool things that are happening in the macabre? Absolutely. Like, what are we going to recommend for July? Do you want why me to start? You, yeah, you jump oh, right in. Shh, Nikes. Okay. I'm going to go. You know what? I'm going to go with the one that I first, the one that I am genuinely looking forward to the most. And that is no disrespect to my other recommendations. I'm just this is this is the one for me. It is talk to me. Uh, the directorial debut of Danny and Michael Philippow, brother, Australian brothers, um, who are a former or maybe still current YouTube sen- sensations known as Raka Raka. Um, anyway, this is their feature debut. Uh, it's being distributed by A24. It premiered at, at its first screening at the Adelaide Film Festival. Shout out to Adelaide and all the quality people living there. Um which has a, 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 an awesome and, for the last 10 years, really up-and-coming developing film industry of its own. Fans of Wolf Creek will certainly um, know that. But anyway, talk to me. It um, Starring a couple, uh, a few uh, unknowns, at least to me, but it also has Lord of the Rings Miranda Otto, um, you know, which is pretty cool. So um, it is the directorial debut. Like I said, it screened at Adelaide Film Festival, but it premiered, had its world premiere at Sundance. Imagine having your first movie premiere at Sundance. That's pretty fucking great. Kicked yeah, off a amazing. bidding war. Um, it got really, really like crazy buzz. A24 is distributing it. And the trailer is genuinely terrifying. Um, you know, when the trailer scares you, 
that's a great sign for the movie. Um, so the short of it is it's um, there's this kind of gnarly desiccated witch's hand or like cursed hand that if you touch it, you grab it in, in a handshake and uh, say the words, talk to me, you become possessed by some departed spirit or whatever. And it becomes like a viral challenge online amongst teens to do the talk to me challenge. Um, so this thing gets passed around and passed around and it really plays Which into like any. Challenge yeah, it really plays into yeah. modern, you know, and I'm actually going to get into that in another recommendation, too. But it plays into like the sort of modern uh, phenomena of, of uh, you know, it's not modern for young people to push the limits and dare each other to extremes. It's just now becoming so widespread because of social media. Anyway, you grab the hand, you say, talk to me, you get possessed by the dead and you can ask it questions or for boons or something like that. And obviously that goes about as well as you'd imagine. Um, flatliner style, something comes back. It, it doesn't yeah. quite leave. Or they, I think they, something along the lines like they push the rules, they break the rules. They're very, very strict There's rules to this. Yeah, they do like a gremlins thing where they just fuck up the rules and they bring something back. But it is got crazy good buzz everyone's talking about this it looks, looks like a lot of new uh actors that, yes or like a lot of young actors young, young, actors, young australian like actors new actors to me it's to me as well um we did fight over who was going to make this recommendation I, we, we did a little bit and it it got just bloody obviously I mean, he won i am i am in bandages but over the book most that i'm going to recommend also we fought about so um so want to give a shout out to uh, newcomer Sophie Wilde. She's the, uh, the, the, I guess the lead in this film is apparently a really, a real breakout. Her performance is really being talked about. Um, it's being compared to the evil dead and Danny and Michael Filippow have uh, now been signed on to direct a, a, a new version of street fighter, which listen, good for them. That's great. But I don't understand why you would need to improve on the already perfect version starring Jean-Claude Van Damme and Raul Julia as, um, I don't know. Like, shit, I can't remember. But uh, anyway, good luck to them. Talk to me. It is coming out in theaters on July 28th. So a uh, pretty good way to close out uh, a month. Yeah, wait. With, with what looks to be like a genuinely, genuinely frightening movie. I can't wait. You started at the end. I'm going to start towards the beginning Ooh. of the month. Um, Omega to Alpha. My first recommendation is a collection of short stories mm. by one of uh, Taryn Tandem's favorite authors, Paul and Tremblay. constant listener. Yeah, right. Um, it's called The Beast That You Are, colon, stories. And yeah. that comes out July 11th. Yeah, that's also something my therapist said to me once. <laughs> and, um, you know, we love Paul Tremblay. Oh, He's yeah. definitely one of the, like, our favorite contemporary um, horror novelists. A modern master. Mm -hmm. A big, big, uh, Stephen King is also a big fan. So I feel like we're in, we're in good company. And I discovered him through his short stories. Yes. Um, so this uh, is named for the title story, um, The Beast You Are. It's about a dog, a cat, and a mythic monster. Um, and it is going to talk about, like, you know, terror throughout several of the tales in the book. I can't wait. His his work is always good. Yeah. Always. Um, there's another uh, one of the short stories called The Dead Thing. I just love Oof. when people, yeah. That's a great have, title ominous names yeah yeah um and it's about a middle schooler who is dealing with the aftermath of her parents uh substance abuse and um, divorce and then um the brother her brother claims to find a shoe box with a dead thing inside and he won't show it to her and won't let the box out of his sight so i think that's really interesting and I, um you know i'm really interested in reading the stories uh because i think this is a great way to introduce yourself to an author you know we've talked about paul tremblay a bunch he wrote um cabin at the end of the world oof. and um you head know, full of ghosts head full of ghosts absolutely so if you are at all interested in well, they've been talking about it. I haven't read. I'm not ready to commit to a full book. Dip Maybe your pick toe up, in. Yeah. To or the, the I'm sure swamp. there'll be an excerpt of yeah. 
one of these short stories. That's the nice thing about short stories. It's a low stakes way to discover a new author. Um, because if you don't like it, you haven't really given much of a commitment to it. Uh, but I, I do like this. You know, Stephen King has been doing this for decades, releasing collections of short stories and novellas in between his longer works. And I like this continuation you see in like authors like Brian Evanson and um, Paul Tremblay and Josh Mallerman, you know, these sort of these new modern masters uh, releasing their shorter works as well. I'm glad to see that the short story form is still alive and well these days. Yeah, because if you have and this is the thing out there to some authors and um, in my most recent book club meeting, we talked about this a little bit with the novel that we read. Um, it felt very much like there was a really good novella Yeah, that maybe the publisher had pushed, t- you know, to expand the world a little bit hmm. um, because we felt that if it had just stuck to these sections that it would have been. Yeah, perfect. That's, but it was a first novel. That was always and I my think problem. Sometimes first novels have that issue of where they overwrite a bit. You know, serialized television has now grown to a place where they they don't feel obligated to have twenty three episodes a season. They have as many episodes as t- they you know the story requires. Because like in the two thousands, when TV became more serialized. 23 episodes there there had to be a few each season that were just filler bullshit yeah it's a lot to come except up for with. community because the first couple of seasons had 23 episodes it's amazing it's um, the best show yeah six seasons in a movie but yeah so i think it it's a great way to introduce yourself to paul tremblay either through this short story collection or um one of his previous head full of ghosts is a good example his works aren't typically very long either they're well they definitely go quickly yeah um so check it out oh july 11th i look forward to you getting the book and then putting it on the pile of two read books and me just staring at it waiting to that's get that's not to true it. <laughs> i'll never do that oh that's is this slander am i slandering I'm slanderous the secret never tell you about it do i go next Yes, that's oh how this is format has worked for over a year. I'm just I'm bad at math. I uh, my next one is my fun recommendation. Now, listen, as you may have noticed by now, I'm just gonna state that if there is a horror movie coming out with Nicolas Cage in it, it's getting recommended by me. That's happening. So <laughs> it's a new month, which means there's a new Nicolas Cage horror movie coming out. This one is coming from Israeli director Yuval Adler. Uh, Also on July 28th, so uh, depending on what kind of mood you're in on the 28th, maybe you just saw Talk to Me and you need to, you know, lighten up a little bit. Why not see Sympathy for the Devil? (laughs) (laughs) So I just... I'm not going to see it, so there'll be a seat right next to uh, my beloved co-host. Come on down, folks. I just watched the trailer for this. I just watched the trailer for this, and it looks... So there's basically like, in my opinion, there are two kinds of core Nicolas Cage performances. There's the quiet, understated intensity performance, you know, punctuated by like well-earned bouts of rage. We're talking like Pig, Mandy, Leaving Las Vegas, Raising Arizona. It was was real like quote unquote serious work. And then there's the batshit crazy Nicolas Cage, like bad lieutenant port of call New Orleans or face off. And pretty much every other movie he's ever done, which is not to say bad, because the movies I just mentioned are some of his best movies. Um, it just this looks like the latter is what I'm saying. So this kind of this movie kind of looks like if Michael Mann's Collateral and Drive Angry had a, a like a baby, which Collateral is one of my favorite Tom Cruise movies. And Drive Angry is another Nicolas Cage horror movie, which is. A lot of fun. So anyway, Joel Kinnaman plays a, um, I, I'm guessing like a rideshare driver uh, whose wife is in labor. He's on his way to the hospital when a very red Nicolas Cage hops into the back. And, and by red, I mean he's wearing like a red sequin suit and his hair is dyed bright red. So have fun with that. <laughs> anyway, he points a gun at him and he says drive. And it looks like he puts him through a night of just torture. Um, psychological torture. Is like elements of the hitcher. 
kind of in oh, there. I love and that. it looks like he's playing the actual devil in this movie, punishing Joel Kinnaman on this hell ride nightmare. And I really like Joel Kinnaman. Joel Kinnaman's great. He, he looks like he plays a real kind of downtrodden person with a possible dark past. Um, oh, so like the character that he played in everything the following no um the killing the killing yeah yeah so um <laughs> if nicholas cage is actually playing the devil i just want to point out that this year alone would see nicholas cage playing himself in the unbearable weight of massive talent dracula dracula in renfield and satan in sympathy for the devil so but didn't he also year. play the devil on that motorcycle comic book no that was ghost rider he, oh. he is he is the spirit of vengeance oh, okay. but not the devil all right um <laughs> now <laughs> oh yeah the transformation scene is so good it takes like 10 minutes it's so long it's like the fight scene from they live it just takes so long and it's just you know early 2000 cgi of nicholas cage being like oh as like different parts of his body turn on catch fire it's great it's the best it's this year would also see him playing superman in a in a you know a, a, a quick cameo from the flash which like five people saw mm-hmm. so um anyway look this movie is crazy it looks crazy go into it with those expectations i fully expect it to be a lot of fun it looks like a lot of fun it um i'm really looking forward to the the inevitable production of Macbeth where Nicholas plays Cage plays every single role. Um, mm-hmm. I can't wait to see that. That's going to be great. But anyway, July twenty eighth in theaters. Sympathy for the Devil. Just why not? Amazing. It, yeah. <laughs> Let's take a quick break. Oh. Tired of being told to calm down? Annoyed at no one believing you when you say you see someone outside or in the house or following you home? Finally, a solution for you to prove once and for all you got this. Introducing Final Girl CBD Seltzer. FG CBD Seltzer combines everything you love about that sparkly, bubbly treat with the calming and focused effect of cannabidiol. With just one 12 ounce can of FG CBD, you can make it through every bump in the night, hysterical frenemy outburst, inappropriate or unwanted romantic overtures, and jump scare after jump scare after jump scare. Try our enticing flavors like Redemption Raspberry, Exhausted by Elderberry, Extra Virgin Mary, and Mellow Melon Maniac. With each sip, feel all of the nonsense coming from those around you melt away while you figure out how to get yourself out of this fucking nightmare. This is a fake ad for a fake product on a horror-themed podcast. We do not make this amazing sounding seltzer for any reason, but if we did, this would be a great niche market. But we don't, and most likely won't. And we're back. And I just want to address something. We have had a little bit of difficulty in securing new sponsors, but we've got some deals in the works, and uh, we should be having some really exciting new products to shove at you absolutely absolutely capitalism as we go into the fall yeah. season we'll be as, and student uh, loan being sponsored by new products student loan payments restart we gotta uh you know mm. make that make that money anyway welcome back what should we watch in july why don't you yeah so i will say listeners? that we want to st- to recommend I, and I say we but I'm going to be heading this one up but, but it's including. definitely for both of us um, season five of what we do in the <laughs> shadows I can't wait which comes out July 13th and just keeps getting better for those of you who haven't listened to any previous episode or don't know what we're talking about what we do in the shadows is a mockumentary um, about a group of vampires that have lived centuries together and get into various real life situations in their very vampiric, misaligned selves. They're just like 
people born in the you know 17th century or earlier and just have not adapted to modern life. And it's based on Taika Waititi's um, and Jermaine Clement's movie of the same title. It's actually a continuation. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, because in the first season they make some cameos, but now it's they like it's fully conti- its own. Yeah, thing. it's sort of its own iteration. Now it's it's separated, but it takes place in the whole like world that they created uh, along with Wellington Paranormal. And what's really exciting is that it is also been greenlit for a sixth season. So oh, wow. this is not going to be the last season. That's great. And my big question is, will Guillermo finally get what he's always wanted? Looks like to he, become a vampire. Well, based on the recent trailer, that it looks like that's going to be addressed. It's going to be addressed. But will he get what he's always wanted? We'll see. Uh, I mean, hopefully he won't be locked inside a coffin for three months with like a poop bag. <laughs> So, you know, this is an episodic show. Lots of, you know, uh, chaos ensues in each episode. It's really always funny, always dark. You have to pay attention because there are minute by minute jokes. It's it's on Hulu and we really recommend watching it on streaming because we have to keep rewinding to catch the parts we laugh too loud to get. It's like like the movie. It's just it's relentless. It's nonstop. You're like cracking up the whole time and you have to keep going back because you just missed the last joke. And everybody's coming back. Um, so, you know, even the even doll Nadja. Right. Yes. <laughs> um, so July 13th. I mean, there's nothing much to say about it. It's hilarious. It's super entertaining. It's our highest recommendation. It's an episodic show. So it's one of our favorites. It's also, I mean, it's legit horror in that it, it really plays on the tropes. It's gory. It's it's It rewards fans of the genre, but it is firmly the funniest show on TV. Absolutely. And I would say it's uh, also could probably fit into the queer horror genre oh, absolutely i mean matt barry's character is a pansexual you know uh, yeah active lover yes. <laughs> maybe we'll see in this season the return of and laszlo as well um, laszlo's bisexual johnny daytona oh D- uh, jackie, daytona. jackie daytona i hope not i think jackie daytona just needs to live in his one legendary episode i love the fact that jackie daytona came out of nowhere and disappeared just as mysteriously. Well, you know, Colin Robinson finally became himself again he did. in season four. He's back to himself. Um, and, you know, Laszlo had really started to raise baby Colin as his own. So I'm sure there's going to be some interplay with that. Which Nandor. Would be really funny. I said uh, Nandor. I believe is bisexual. He mentions that he had in his in his harem oh, yeah. men and women. Yeah, yeah. Both they're men all and women. That's the thing about vampires. I always find strange when certain groups of people start attributing sexual proclivities and whatnot to beings that have been alive for centuries. Hey, when you're alive for five hundred years, you try things. Yeah. I don't think sexuality or preference really plays into it at that point. I think it's really just more experiential and boredom. Like, what else can I do? I have exhausted all opportunities and I cannot die. Absolutely. And also, will we get an idea of, um, Mm. will there be a new familiar coming into the home? You think so? I don't know. Huh. That'd be interesting. I mean, Guillermo. Just watch it. Yeah. Just watch it. Or will Guillermo still be a familiar and a vampire? And if you haven't watched it, man, start from the beginning. Start with the movie. It's all good. It's all a good time. It will put you in such a good mood. Absolutely. It, it's a, It's definitely a, a great a great comedy. For those of you having a tough time out there, and by that I mean everyone, um, it's, a, it's a bomb. Yeah. It's good. It's really good. That's awesome. I can't wait. Is it me? Yeah. Oh, so my last recommendation is... Recommendation? My, my, my Necro-recommendation? Ma- my mass recommendation is... Um, it's a double feature, and it consists... Uh, all right. So I did my fun one. I did my really looking forward to one. The first one is, look, I, I'm hoping for the best, but I, I, I'm not too sure about this. It is Insidious 5. The, oh, the red you are? Door. I thought you, okay. I'm, 
I'm just going to say that it is being released. I was so, going to mention it too. It is being released. Yeah, it's coming out July 7th. It's the directorial debut of Patrick Wilson, and we love Patrick Wilson yeah. over and here. And I really loved Insidious. We're big fans of the first two movies. Mm-hmm. I fell off after that. Yeah. Um, now, this one is the return of the Abbott family, who has have not really been part of the story since the second movie. Um, and it is the return of all of them. Patrick Wilson, Rose, Rose Byrne, Byrne, and Ty Simpkins. Yeah. So it's it's kind of fun that Ty Simpkins is now, grown you know, up. grown up. The story is he is uh, moving into college. His dad moves him in. But once he's in college, it seems that his connection to the further and the red demon have not quite gone away. Mm-hmm. And all the insidiousness ensues. Um, now we love Patrick Wilson. He is quite possibly the most reliable actor working there. It, I can't, I can think of a lot of movies he's been in that haven't been good, but I can't think of a performance he's given that yeah, hasn't been good. He always does good. a solid job. Yes. Always. It's like, it's either solid to great. He is just stalwart. So I, I you know, we love to see. Our favorite actors and talent, you know, do what they want to do and progress in their careers. And if directing is what Patrick Wilson wants to head into. That's awesome. I hope this works. I just, you know, the last few movies haven't really done it for me. And I'm not hearing wonderful things about this installment, but I will give it a watch. It's July 7th in theaters, Insidious 5. Now, my second part of the double feature is it's a Netflix original. It's coming out July 14th. And it is Bird Box Barcelona. Mm. Now I'm go. It's uh, directed by David and Alex. Pa- um, David and Alex Pastor. Uh, it's another brother duo, uh, like Michael and Danny Filippo. Yeah, I, sh- I should mention our brothers. Um, now they are probably best known as directors of the very underrated and tragically buried 2009 film Carriers, starring Chris Pine, known as the best Chris, in my opinion. Um, so. I'm going to level with y'all. I've never seen the American version of Bird Box starring Sandra Bullock, but I did read the book by Josh Mallerman, and the book yeah. is great. So I highly recommend that. I haven't seen the movie. It's on my list. It just, you know, I don't know. Things happen. Anyway. I think it just came out. Bird Box the movie? No, it yeah. came out a few years ago. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah. So, um... Now, this version is, is I believe, designed to kick off a sort of international bird box universe. Now, it, it it's not a con- sequel or anything to the story. It takes place in Barcelona starring a guy and his daughter, you know, traveling through the streets um, after this alien invasion. Now, anybody not familiar with the story, these aliens come down to Earth. And if you look at them, you go insane and kill everyone mm. around you, including yourself. Um, so... People have learned to adapt to a world where they must be blind to survive. So they, um, everyone walks around with blindfolds and, you know, have set up things in the world like guards and sign rails and things like that. It's, it's an interesting, like we discussed when you were talking about A Quiet Place too. Mm-hmm. it's an interesting um, reversal of what is considered a disability into a necessary tool of survival you must be blind to live in this world and if you can't adapt to that you're dead Hmm. so it's just kind of i like that because it's a little bit of showing a maybe a modern mainstream audience that this is difficult yeah it is hard to do and think about that next time have a little bit of respect anyway like the um the og it 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 looks like a, a pretty tense you know it's a family story like the first movie, but um, this one looks like it has some larger set pieces and it takes place in a major city, unlike the original, which was sort of in the suburbs and in the woods. Um, now it's going to kick off, I guess, an international bunch of bird box movies, oh, which, cool. you know, Netflix, I got to say, has been crushing it with international releases. Yeah. I love that they're bringing um, these TV and funding these, these, these new shows, these new movies and bringing them to a mainstream audience. I can't tell you, how fucking hard it was in the 80s and 90s to find subtitled international content, like especially once Blockbuster killed all the local video shops. Yeah. Those were the ones that had the weird stuff. Um, and then Blockbuster would just carry 60 movie copies of whatever Rob Schneider movie came out and like nothing from any other country. Fuck Blockbuster. Um, so anyway, 
it's kind of like The Office. Did, you know, did you know The Office has versions like all over the world? Yeah, of um, course. Including the newest one, which is in Saudi Arabia. Hmm. The Office Saudi Arabia version. Wow. Yeah, there's Finland, Israel, um, the Netherlands, Germany. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, so anyway, but unlike those, those are sort of disconnected. Those are just their own version. These are, I guess, the, 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 the premise is... This that invasion this has happened. Everywhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like oh, um, in the same timeline. The Time sequel line. to Train to Busan, which didn't have any of the original characters, um, be, but took place in the same sort of world, um, Peninsula, it was called. So, anyway, yeah, it's just an expansion of the franchise. And um, I don't know. It looks, I watched the trailer and it looked pretty good. So, awesome. I, you know, Barcelona and, and Spain has given us uh, some some really amazing talent in, you know, people like Guillermo del Toro, Paco Plaza, the Pastor Brothers, um, Kwame Balaguerro. So, fuck yeah. I'm in. Let's check it out. July 7th on... Uh, so, my last recommendation, um, it's coming out July 21st, which Is for it... some reason that mm, date... I don't know. Something, I, I feel like something infernal and horrible happened on that day. Now, is your recommendation for me to switch to decaf? Please. Mm-hmm. Um, so Never. my recommendation is a new film called Cobweb. Oh, yeah. And this is another one we, yeah, we did. battled over. There's um, blood everywhere. So um, Samuel Bowden is going to be the director or is the director of this film. He previously directed and wrote 2019's French film Marianne. Oh, that... It was a TV series, actually. Right, the horror series, yeah. correct. And tragically not getting a second season. Bullshit, man. Because mm. that was... Listen, even though it's not getting a second season, I'm sorry to jump in. Watch the first season of Marianne. It is so good. It's so good. Or you can watch Cobweb because this is, was, you know, from the same creator. And the screenplay is written by Chris Thomas Devlin. He wrote the 2022 Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Mm. Um. Anyway, this has been like completed since 2020. I believe November 2020, this film was completed. Huh. Um, Point Grey Pictures is a producer, which is Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg's production company. Oh no shit. Um, and Vertigo, who produced Barbarian, and it stars uh, Lizzie Kaplan, who you all probably know from. A lot of different things. Mean Girls, Masters of Sex, the most recent. She was in um, um, Castle Rock as a young yeah. Annie Wilkes. Yep. Um, and Anthony Starr as well. Um, from the boys. From the boys. Correct. So the loose, I mean, don't watch the trailer. I mean, you can, but the, I'll tell you the trailer it gives, it gives lot, away yeah, too much. It gives away way too much. I'm, 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 I wish I had turned it off when I did. The but, filmmaker but, said that they drew inspiration from the Telltale Heart, Edgar Allan Poe story. And basically mm. that's, you know, a paranoid person who's driven insane by noise mm-hmm. underneath the floorboards. Mm-hmm. Um, but this film, just a quick plot summary is eight year old Peter is plagued by a mysterious constant tap from inside his bedroom wall. And his parents insist that it's his imagination as he becomes more afraid he believes that his parents could be hiding something terrible. Yes. So, and the um, trailer does lean heavily into that. It does. And the parents definitely seem to be taken over by some kind of power that they are like gaslighting their kid. Oh yeah. There's In, I love I yeah. love the vibe. I yeah. love the horrible sense just of go to sleep. betrayal You'll be fine. and and the loss of confidence in yourself when those closest to you don't believe you well you know i hate that's one of my yeah you know what i enjoy about movies and scary movies especially is when you all as the audience knows that some dramatic wrong, irony yeah but Nobody will protect the person who is experiencing it. It's an ex- it's an extreme buildup of tension when you are because I mean as as humans I think we're inclined to share knowledge with others especially if we know that it can affect the outcome of something. Yeah. Um. You know, it's like oh I can't unknow this. I have to do something. Right. You know, and sometimes that can make you feel like fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to get involved, but I can't. Like I can't not. I, right. I can't have this knowledge in my head and not step in. Um, 
So it, I think it could be great. Yeah, it it could be. And it, it comes out, you know, at a precarious time with Barbie movie, I think, is coming out right which around there. I'm really looking forward Me to. Me too. I'm really looking forward to But that's not a that. horror film. I, I don't know. From a certain lens, it could be. <laughs> but yeah, so Cobweb, check it out. I Just a shout out to Anthony Starr. He's really got that beautiful yeah. psycho look yeah, he does. down between the boys and this. Like, he's got that, that wonderful kind of serial killer trope of like blonde hair, blue eyed Aryan looks. Um, like he could, could turn on you. He, a, but like he could be Captain America and Ted Bundy at the same time. And I, I you know, it, in the boys, he sort of is, um, that is awesome. I, I am looking forward to cobwebs. I hope it's good. Just because cobweb. Cobweb. Maybe the sequel will be called cobwebs. Maybe like aliens. It's just cobweb. We'll talk about that sign. in a sequel episode. Nice. All right, everyone, enjoy your July. Happy July. Stay cool out there, yeah. far hounds. And go into the theaters where it's air-conditioned. Why not? But um, not the ones that play like 100 trailers Or first. go late. Go Support your local indie theaters for sure. They are always better. They just are. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Terror in Tandem is written, produced, and recorded by Laura and Richard Mathiason, and edited and mixed by Richard Mathiason. Our theme was written and performed by Carrie Denver, and all other music was written and performed by David Suspanik. All opinions expressed on this podcast are our own and should be taken as such. Thanks for listening, and please remember to give us a like, a review, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time. We're standing right behind you.